doing out there, George? Watching the snow fall. If it keeps piling up like this, it's going to engulf the inn, and we'll be trapped in here, and we won't have any food, and we'll start eating each other's flesh to survive. George, the basement is full of, of canned goods. Dick, that stuff is loaded with sodium. <laughs> George, uh, w winter will be over soon. You just have a a mild case of cabin fever. That's what Shelley Duvall said to Jack Nicholson in The Shining. <laughs> right before he buried an axe in Scatman Crothers' chest. Okay, Dick. I made up those five silly rooms for those five silly guests you're expecting. And did you clean up their five silly bathrooms? Well, all except the one at the end of the hall. It has a defective mirror. Makes me look pouty. <laughs> Life's a bitch, and then you die. Couldn't we just cram these guys into one room and charge them for five? You know, may maybe you should be the innkeeper, and, and I should be the maid. Oh, no, thanks. People in sedentary jobs tend to get those repulsive cellulite deposits. Why, why do you think I wear slacks? Did you put uh, mints on their pillows yet? You just love sucking the lifeblood out of me, don't you? Hi, w welcome to the Stratford. I'm, I'm Dick Loudon. You must be the, uh, the party of, of five. Are we that obvious? <laughs> well, when you've worked behind the front desk as, as long as I have, you, you know, you develop a, a keen eye. And repulsive cellulite deposit. <laughs> Boy, Vermont sure is beautiful in the winter. It turns you into a frozen zombie. <laughs> That's the, the George Utley. He's our, our social director. We thought after we settle in, we'd like to grab a bite. Can you suggest a good restaurant? The Lusty Buccaneer out on Route 14. The waitresses wear uh, hot pants and eye patches. <laughs> it doesn't sound like the kind of restaurant a priest would frequent. Well, maybe not, but you guys should have a, a hell of a time. <laughs> You, you, you mean you, you men are all... Uh, uh, are, are you guys, the fellows, the holy men here, here to, uh, to open, a, open a winery? <laughs> no, we're on retreat. Occasionally, we're able to get away to do some self-examination, meditate, and, God willing, raise a little heck. <laughs> Let's lay some ground rules. <laughs> there will be no roughhousing in the rooms. No all-night beer parties. And if I find one cigarette burn in the carpet, Dick, I'll have you booted out of here. Clear? Yes, yes ma'am. Good. <laughs> Dick. These guys are real loonies. I just saw them praying to their pancakes. <laughs> Stephanie, they were saying grace. Do people still do that? Yeah, there, there's still some loonies around who thank God for their daily bread or flapjacks. <laughs> I wouldn't know. A Vanderkellen never has to pray for anything. Excuse me, miss. Could we trouble you for some more coffee? All right. <laughs> but forget about the grace. I already blessed the pot in the kitchen. Would it be a bother to ask for some decaf? Yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Here's your decaf. <laughs> Dick, isn't it time to tell Stephanie they're priests? Joanna, let me enjoy this a little while longer. I mean, there's so little in my life that, that makes me smile. <laughs> so, Lou at the gas station was right. You are harboring five eligible bachelors. Uh, Miss Gallagher.
Goddard, I don't know how eligible they are. Then I guess it's up to me to find out. Dick, tell her. Not, not yet. I'm, I'm smiling. <laughs> Hello, boys. Hello. Hi. I'm Prudence Goddard, the town librarian. <laughs> I'm also the unofficial welcome wagon, <laughs> so to speak. Friendly town. Avert your eyes, John. I've seen her type before, a hotbed of sin. <laughs> What do they call you, fella? <laughs> Ken, Miss Goddard, uh, we're all men of the cloth. And I'm a woman of the sheets. <laughs> Miss, uh, Miss Goddard, uh, our, our guests are, uh, are priests. Uh, oh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> Are any of you drifting from the calling? Certainly not. I see. Well, I'm sure the church appreciates the sacrifice you're making. What a shame. I was prepared to show you a whole new kind of heaven. <laughs> Morning, George. Sleep well? When's this winter hell going to end? I slept well, too, thanks. George, if you're not too busy today, we'd love to have you take us ice fishing. Well, I was planning to stare at the fireplace again today. But heck, I can do that later. How about it, man? A little ice fishing? Excellent yeah. idea. Gee, if I'd known we were going fishing, I would have brought my boots. Are you saying you could use the... the shoes of the fisherman? <laughs> I guess you're going fishing and they'll need box lunches. You know, if you don't learn to do things for yourselves, no woman will ever have you. <laughs> you haven't told her about our vocation, have you? Uh, not, not yet. But does that make me a sinner? <laughs> How long has she been working for you? Uh, seven years. Then you're serving your own particular kind of penance. <laughs> supposed to read those Bibles we keep in the nightstands? No, no, they're, they're just, they're just for show. Well, that's what I thought. Maybe they're priests on retreat. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Look what we caught. 23 of the scaliest perch ever to be plucked out of Johnny Cake Pond. Stephanie, why don't we take these fish into the kitchen and start cleaning them? They just came out of the water. How dirty could they be? <laughs> Joanna means you have to cut off their heads, rip out their guts, and peel off their skin. Ew! Come on, Stephanie, just pretend they're poorly dressed townspeople. Uh, th thanks for taking George along. This little outing really, really perked up his spirits. He was indispensable, especially when it came time to remove the fish hook from Jasper's bum. I must say, there's something about Vermont that produces a special breed of man. Hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. Then, then there's the occasional hybrid. Rumor has it the Stratford is playing host to a quintet of ecclesiastics. If you mean priests, yeah, uh, this, this is Father Kent. How can I help you, Larry? Hi. We made this pilgrimage to obtain papal authentication for several of our holy relics. The first one being the head of Judas Iscariot. <laughs> the thick eyebrows and fleshy cheeks are trademark features of the dark apostle. I hate to disappoint you, Larry, but this is a coconut with a monkey's face carved in it. We do have another item that's bound to catch your ecumenical eye. The Trout of Turin. <laughs> the, the, 
the trout of Turin? My brother Darrell befriended this particular trout while we were touring the Canadian provinces. <laughs> he became so attached to it that he kept it under his pillow. I'm afraid a fish stain on a pillowcase doesn't qualify as a holy relic. <laughs> well, Darrell, it appears as if our sacred sack is sacred no more. Come, let us part the waters of Johnny Cake Bog and seek solace in that ancient ark. Excuse me, I feel a sudden need to go upstairs and pray to St. Jude, the patron saint of hopeless causes. Well, it sounds like, uh, sounds like you had a good day, George. Oh, you bet. I never knew priests were supposed to have fun. <laughs> Father John told this dilly of a joke about a wayward Lutheran who went to this farmer's house. George, George, I, too I, I, know, I, know the, I know the joke. Uh, but it, it was a wayward Baptist. Baptist? Oh, that's even funnier. <laughs> George, George, I guess you're over, you know, your, your winter blahs. Oh, I wasn't just a winter dick. I was depressed because there wasn't any meaning in my life. But that all changed this afternoon. Dick, I've decided to become a priest. Just, just because a priest tells you a, a dilly of a story, you're, you're ready to, to sign up? This isn't the first time I've considered the priesthood. When I was an altar boy at St. Michael's, I was a hot prospect. <laughs> then one Sunday, I dropped a 50-pound Bible on Father McNee's toe. He couldn't genuflect for a month. G George, um, don't, don't, you th don't you think maybe you're a little, well, a little old, you know, to be, to be starting over? Dick, what's age got to do with it? From now on, I'll be answering to a divine boss. You know, I, I always thought of myself as a kind of divine boss. <laughs> Don't delude yourself. You're as mortal as they come. <laughs> Greetings, master of the house. Uh, where is the minor spouser? <laughs> She's in her kitchen. <laughs> Now she's in der lobby. <laughs> Good Abend, my little schnitzel. Michael, why are you talking fake German? Herr Dick started it. Dish not. <laughs> oh, the pew, Steph. What stinks? Me. I had to clean a ton of perch for some fishermen staying here. Oh, my malodorous muffin. <laughs> you were bullied by a band of barnacle barbarians? Yes. Were they cute? <laughs> hey, Dick. You want to watch going my way? I've decided to model myself after Bing Crosby. He was a good priest and a heck of a crooner. Well, I hope they teach crooning at the seminary, George. <laughs> Hello, George. Hi. Any reason for you to be here? Well, let's see. I own the inn. I live here. No, not none whatsoever. So, George, is it true you're entering the priesthood? Yes, I'm leaving my sinful life behind. I've taken the vows of poverty and obedience. I can't help but notice you left out chastity. Are you trying to seduce me? <laughs> Heavens, no. I see. In that case, I'd like to send you off with a very special gift. <laughs> very much like the one I bestowed upon Tommy Anderson before he joined the Navy. And like Danny O'Shannon before he joined the Sideshow. And Scotty Buck before he... I guess he wasn't going anywhere. Miss <laughs> Goddard, you're trying to entice me with your femininity. Just think of me as your last supper. <laughs> I, I already ate. Then think of me as your after-dinner mint. 
Miss Goddard, I don't think priests are allowed to to snack. You have more inner strength than I thought. You'll make a wonderful priest, George. Thank you, my child. Not even one quick game of woof woof? <laughs> Just remember, sweet George. I'll be waiting for you in the afterlife. I just withstood the greatest test known to man. Did uh, Miss Goddard do her dance of the 17 veils? <laughs> Thank goodness, no. I would have been a goner for sure. Uh, any reason for you to be here? Well, let's see. I still own the inn. I still live here. None whatsoever. Hi, Father Ken. How's, uh, how's Father Jasper feeling? Better. Some people can eat perch and it doesn't affect them. Others break out in angry red blotches. You know, I've been wanting to talk to you, Father. You're, uh, you're interested in becoming a priest. Yeah, how'd you know? You're holding the copy of Going My Way. It's about as close as we get to a recruitment film. <laughs> Tell me, when did you come to this decision? Right after Father John's story about the uh, the nearsighted Presbyterian and the billy goat. <laughs> <laughs> that one brought the archbishop to his knees. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you know, George, you're seeing us at one of our rare vacations. <clears throat> Most of the time, being a priest is hard work. Yeah, I guess those exorcisms can really wear a guy out. <laughs> well, some exorcisms. But a more time-consuming task is to provide counsel. Say one of your parishioners confessed that he was being unfaithful to his spouse. You mean like Officer Shiflett and Miss Goddard? <laughs> See, he was going on a stakeout, and Miss Goddard wanted to send him off with a very special gift. So, George, a priest is supposed to keep all confessions in confidence. Boy, if there's anyone who can't keep a secret, it's me. Though I never told a soul that Joanna has a tattoo of a seahorse on her thigh. Joanna has a tattoo? Well, since you know that much, I might as well tell you the rest. <laughs> See, she was showering, and I was outside on a ladder. Six good, that... George, good. I, I think we've concluded that you've got a problem in the loose lip department. <laughs> well, that aside, a, a priest must also have the calling. Who calls you? God. What does he sound like? Does he have a deep voice like Brenda Vaccaro? <laughs> it's not so much a, a voice, George, as it is a call from the soul. Gee, I, I haven't heard a peep out of my soul. There are other ways to show your devotion. You could volunteer your time at St. Michael's. Well, I don't think they'd want to see the likes of me again. We had a falling out years ago. The church is all forgiving. Unless you're that notorious altar boy who dropped the 50-pound Bible in Father McNee's toe. <laughs> uh, ha, 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 ha. Uh, do you think they need any help over at St. Christopher's? I'm sure they'd be very grateful. Uh, well, thanks for being so straight with me, Father. Maybe I'll put off this priest thing for a while. I guess I'd better return going my way, unless you want to see it. No, thanks. I've seen it over a hundred times. Well, I've got all of Cheech and Chong's films. <laughs> Let's watch Going My Way. I hope you had a pleasant stay. Oh, we did. Good. Now I know what hell is like. <laughs> well, come on. I'll give you directions out of hell. So, I guess, I guess you won't be taking taking George along. No. It's funny. Seems like every time we have a retreat, somebody wants to join up. <laughs> this time I thought it'd be you. Well, I, I did consider the priesthood briefly when, when I was a kid. But then I went to see the Bells of St. Mary and noticed how hot, how lovely uh, <laughs> Ingrid Bergman looked. And say no more. We've lost a lot of candidates to that movie. <laughs> oh! You're checking out. I better not find any Bibles missing. Goodbye, Father Ken. So long. 
Why are you calling him father? Because I'm a priest. You are not. <laughs> yes, he is. Oh! Oh! Did... <laughs> Did... Didn't I tell you? Excuse us, Father. How could you do this to me? Now I'll rot in hell for sure. Uh, Father, I don't think you've met my little daughter, Steffi. I was going to name her Madonna. Oh, she's lovely. Bye now. Did I tell you that my daddy is chummy with the Pope? How does Cardinal Ken sound? I like it. Come out to the car, we'll talk. <laughs> Look what I found in the side yard. The first crocus of spring. About time, George. I'm going to take it over to the library and offer it to Miss Goddard. Woof, woof. <laughs> All right. Who told those priests about my tattoo? <laughs> Stop, Dick. Stop what? Stop hiding your figs under the toast. <laughs> Joanna, don't be silly. I'm not hiding figs under my toast. <laughs> well, what do you know, figs? We talked about this before. Now you've got to start eating better, and that means getting more fruit in your diet. I don't like people telling me how to eat. That's why I became a grown-up. Not eating his figs. I was saving them for dessert. Just try them, they're delicious. I hate figs. They're full of vitamins. I hate vitamins. That's dumb. Why would anybody hate vitamins? Because they come in things like figs. <laughs> Anything wrong? I think I'm gonna faint. I really think I'm going to faint. Stop clowning, Kirk. Wait, wait a minute. Wait. Oh, God. I don't think he's lying. Oh, God. No. Let's get him to a chair. chair. Kirk? Oh, come Kirk. On. What oh, happened? Take it easy. Take it easy. Here, I'll get a cold towel. I'll get him some water. I'll get him some figs. <laughs> Dick! <laughs> Kirk, what's the matter? A man just held up my cafe. What? What? Was anyone hurt? No, fortunately, being breakfast, the place was empty. <laughs> well, what? What happened? This guy came into my cafe. He looked like all my other customers. Hostile, nervous, trembling. I said, can I help you? He said, yeah. Then he grabbed my radio off the counter and threatened to hit me over the head with it if I didn't give him all my money. He actually said that? I think so. All I could really hear was Melissa Manchester singing, don't cry out loud. How, how much money did he get? All my life savings, $2,000. 
$2,000? You said you were broke. How'd you save $2,000? Same way as everybody else. It was my tax refund. <laughs> Kirk, this is terrible. Did you call the police? No, no. I was too upset to do anything like that. You, uh, you should call your insurance company. Them I called. <laughs> well, then just try to calm down. You weren't hurt, and your insurance company will reimburse you for everything. I hope so. I don't know. I don't trust anyone anymore. Kirk, it was just one incident. You, you can't stop trusting people. You don't know what it feels like to be threatened like that. I was terrorized, Dick. There's no telling what kind of psychological trauma I may have suffered. Right now, I'm, a, I'm afraid to walk out on the street again. Kirk, is there anything I can do? How about a movie? Here you go. You'll be in room eight, and I'll have somebody bring your bags up in a minute. Uh, thank you. Oh, Dick, this is Mr. and Mrs. Powell. They're spending their honeymoon with us. Oh, congratulations. We hope you enjoy your stay here. Thank you. I'm sure we will. <laughs> well, here we go. Oh, I always think that's so romantic. Why didn't you ever carry me over the threshold? We talked about that, remember? We did? Yeah, I asked you if you wanted to go through a basically sexist tradition, and probably the two of us look like idiots, and you said, I guess not. Hi. I'm looking for the owner. Hi. You found him. <laughs> Hi. Tom Carson, World Mutual Home and Casualty. Oh, Dick Loudon, and we don't need any insurance. <laughs> Mr. Loudon, we're the uh, insurance carrier for the Minuteman Cafe. I'm investigating the robbery they had over there earlier this week. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just making my report. Need to ask a few neighbors some uh, routine questions concerning Mr. Devane's character. Well, I can certainly vouch for the fact that he's a character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How long have you known Mr. Devane? Uh, actually, not, not that long. But during the time you have known him, uh, he's impressed you as being uh, pretty reputable? Yes. Yes, he's... He's pretty, uh, pr pretty reputable. <laughs> of course, you know, it depends on your definition of, of reputable. <laughs> Would you say he's uh, basically an honest person? Yes. <laughs> basically. I'm just trying to determine whether or not Mr. Devane is an honest man. And I sense some evasiveness on your part. Huh. Well, I'm uh, cer certainly not, not trying to be evasive. <laughs> well, then would you please just answer the question, yes or no? What, what question is that? Is Mr. Devane honest? Look, I, I'm sure Kirk didn't lie about the robbery. Are you saying he lies about other things? He, he fits. He... he uh, he, he fits for fun. He's, he's, a, he's a fun fibber. <laughs> Mr. Loudon, what you're saying is very serious. No, 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 it isn't. Yes, it is. You're saying Mr. Devane can't be trusted. I never, I never said that. Never said what? I, I never said that Kurt couldn't be trusted. You say that all the time. <laughs> Who's this? Uh, George Utley. Do you know Kirk Devane? Sure. If you had to, would you describe him as basically honest or basically dishonest? Well, that depends. <laughs> On what? Who are you? <laughs> this is uh, Mr. Carson. He's investigating the robbery at Kirk's Cafe. See, anytime anyone claims to be robbed and we don't know whether or not they're telling the truth, we have to investigate. Well, I know Kirk is telling the truth. How do you know that? Well, because when Kirk told us about it, Dick said, I don't think he's lying this time. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank both of you gentlemen very much for your help. Uh, Mr. Carson, I, I hope we didn't give you the wrong impression of Kirk. Don't think so. <laughs> Shoot. What's wrong? Oh, I think I got Kirk in trouble. I feel like a traitor. I feel like the, the worst kind of turncoat. Oh, I feel the same way. Well, why? You didn't do anything. No, I meant about you. <laughs> that was delicious. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, we will. <laughs> Honey, I'm 
I'm so glad you decided to let me make you a healthy breakfast for a change. Well, I guess one healthy breakfast isn't going to kill me. I know after you eat this, you're going to have more energy and you're going to feel better all day. Morning, Dick. <laughs> morning, morning, George. Would you uh, pass the butter, please? the jam. <laughs> you pass the syrup, please? powdered sugar I can't eat this all right I'll get you a stack of cholesterol and fat do you want to explain to me what happened over here yesterday <laughs> Kirk, what are you talking about I'm talking about someone singing like a canary to the insurance investigator all right Dick here's your breakfast oh sure sing like a bird eat like a pig <laughs> Is there a problem, Kirk? Problem? When that investigator left my cafe yesterday, everything was fine. Now he's snooping all over town, asking people questions about me. Apparently, someone has led him to believe I might not be telling the truth. I guess that would be Dick. <laughs> Kirk, Dick didn't tell the investigator anything he couldn't have heard from a hundred other people. But he might not have talked to a hundred other people if Dick hadn't told him I was a liar. I only said you lied occasionally. Couldn't you have stretched the truth? That was stretching the truth. <laughs> well, thanks to you, I'm trapped now. What do you mean? They've asked me to drive up to Burlington this afternoon to take a lie detector test. What's wrong with that? What if I don't pass? Kirk, if you're telling the truth about the robbery, you, you have nothing to fear. Dick, you know how I am. There's something inside me that won't allow me to tell the truth. I'm just afraid if they hook me up to that machine, I'll burst into flames. Right, would it make you feel better if I went along with you? Are you volunteering because you're my friend or because you feel guilty? Because I feel guilty. <laughs> Kirk, if you want me to, I'll go with you. Thank you, Leslie, but I'd, I'd never drag someone I care about down into this slimy, seamy mess. I'll take Dick. If I pass out, you won't let my head hit the floor, will you? <laughs> Kirk, relax. It's going to be fine. This is all so sick, Dick. Hooking people up to machines, probing their minds, injecting them with electrical impulses, making them pay for parking. <laughs> Kirk, you don't have to go through this. I do if I want to get what's rightfully mine. The money I got from cheating on my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Devane, here's the water you asked for. Thanks. Could you throw it on the machine? <laughs> Uh, he's joking. And now, uh, Mr. Devane, as I said before, I'll be instructing you through the test. Uh -huh. You'll be asked a series of questions in random order. Your answers will be uh, registered according to your blood pressure, restoration, and skin response, so it is important that you remain calm. calm. <laughs> Remember, all of your responses are to be yes, yes. or no. Yes or no. Do you understand? Yes. Very well. Let's begin. Is your name Kirk Devane? Yes. Are you a resident of Vermont? Yes. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Yes. <laughs> Are you in this country illegally? Yes. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Kirk, Kirk, you're not even listening to the questions. What? You're not listening to what he's asking. What did he say? 
And why uh, don't we begin again? Now, yes. just relax and yes. pay attention. Okay, yes. Is your name Kirk Duvay? Yes. Do you run the Minuteman Cafe? Yes. Do you use illegal narcotics on a regular basis? Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute, he's doing it again. I don't understand. I'm not getting any variation. <laughs> you mean... That machine isn't registering that, he, that he's lying? It barely registers anything. The pens haven't moved. According to this, he's in a coma. <laughs> well, may, uh, maybe the machine's broke. No, that, uh, it was working earlier today. Would you mind answering a few questions uh, just to test it? Uh, me? Well, it will only take a minute. Uh, here, just let me... Uh, let me get you uh, unfastened here. There you go, you're free. Uh, would you stand up, please? Yes. <laughs> Kirk, would you hold my coat? Yes. This <laughs> uh... Must be fascinating work. Yes. <laughs> I've uh, never, never taken a polygraph test before, but then, then again, why, why would I? <laughs> what, uh, what do they call you? Uh, polygraphers? Polygraphists? Lie guys? <laughs> the, uh, the actual term is. Uh, polygraph examiner, but uh, you can call me Polly. <laughs> uh, there, now that does it. Now remember to relax. Make all of your responses yes or no. Right. I, I, I mean yes. <laughs> Fine, then let's begin. Is your name Dick Loud? Yes. No. My, uh, my, my friends call me, call me Dick, but my, my name is, is Richard Loudman. Just answer yes or no. These aren't trick questions. I'm, I'm sorry. Are you a resident of Vermont? Yes, no. <laughs> what I mean is I, I live here now, but uh, I've only lived here for a couple months, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not sure I'm a legal resident. I'm doing it again, aren't I? It's all right. Uh, you do show that the instrument is definitely working. And then how, how do you explain his test? I can't explain it. For some reason, he doesn't register on a polygraph. Well, what, what does this mean? If he doesn't register, it means there's nothing I can do to support his claim. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too, Kirk. Looks like the only way I'm going to get my money back now is to go out and find the guy who stole it. How are you going to do that? We'll ask around. We'll start with the seediest place in town. Well, that would be your place. Okay, we'll start with the second seediest place. This, this is crazy. It's not crazy. This is the kind of place where crummy people hang out. Hi, Kirk. Hi. Nice How's it going? Good to see you. <laughs> Kirk, what, what are we doing here? Looking for my robber. What do you gentlemen have? Look, we don't have time to order. We just want to know if you've seen anybody around here who might be a vicious criminal. What are you talking about? His cafe was robbed. He's trying to find out who did it. You must be from the Minuteman. See, they have heard about it. Everybody's heard about it. Oh, yeah. We were talking, and we figured whoever did it must be from out of town. Why's that? Well, because no one from this town would go in there. <laughs> did you want anything on the menu? No, no. Let's go. Just give me one last shot at it. What are you going to do? I'm not going to do anything embarrassing. 
I'm just going to offer a reward for any information leading to the arrest, conviction, and execution of the person who did it. <laughs> Kirk, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to make a plea for help. Dick, these people, cruddy as they are, are still my neighbors. And around here, neighbors are always willing to lend a hand. People, hello. Everyone, can you listen up, please, just for a second? Can you just listen up? Thank you. As you may or may not know, the Minuteman Cafe was robbed last week. <laughs> Say, would you teach me how to do that? Do what? So, George, why do you want to learn how to sew? Well, every once in a while, I knock a button off of one of my shirts, and I'd like to be able to sew it back on. This is one of your shirts. Oh, uh, well, never mind. <laughs> there you are. I thought you guys would have been back hours ago. How did the test go? You know how a vampire doesn't show up in a mirror? Kirk doesn't show up on a lie detector test. What do you mean? It was a waste of time. The test didn't prove anything. Well, if the test didn't prove anything, what happens now? Well, we don't know for sure, but it, it doesn't look good. Two thousand hard-earned bucks down the drain. Look, Kirk, I, I, know you're, I know you're feeling lousy, but I, it, I mean, it's not the end of the world. You know, you're right, Dick. I feel totally better. <laughs> All right, I, I know it's a cliche, but uh, instead of feeling down, just, you know, count your blessings. Okay, let's count them. I'm broke, I'm alone, I have no credibility, and I'm good-looking. That's one out of four. You know, I've been listening to you all day go on like this, and I'm, I'm trying to be sympathetic, but I, I think you're overlooking one thing. I mean, this, this whole ordeal is your fault. Let's give a hand for the most insensitive man in America. It's not insensitive, it's true. It's, uh, this whole ordeal is the, the classic story of the, the little boy that cried wolf. What story is that? <laughs> you never heard the story about the little boy that cried wolf? Nope. Well, it's a, it's a story about this, this little shepherd boy, and he was out watching over his lambs. His what? His lambs. You mean his sheep. Lambs are sheep. Honey, there's no such thing as a flock of lambs. I didn't say flock, it could have been a, a pair of lambs. I always heard it was goats. All right, whatever. <laughs> anyway, the, the point is, he, he was out watching over his herd of whatever, and, and he was bored, and he thought it'd be fun to, to run into town and, and tell everyone that, that he had seen a wolf. He cried wolf. What? Honey, I don't mean to interrupt, but you said the little boy went into town and told everyone he'd seen a wolf. Actually, he cried wolf, and the whole town came running. No, no, uh, the way I heard it, uh, only his mother and father came running. I thought everybody came running right away. But what, what difference does it make? It doesn't make any difference. Why are you telling the story? Uh, j just hear me out. The, the little shepherd boy kept crying wolf because he enjoyed fooling people. But he had cried wolf so much that when a wolf really came, no one believed him and no one came to help him. Is there supposed to be a point to this? Yes, the wolf ate his lambs. Sheep. Goats. I, I, thought, I thought the wolf ate the little boy. I don't care if the wolf ate the whole damn town. I mean, the moral of the story is that someone or, or something somewhere somehow got, got eaten by the wolf because the little shepherd boy lied and no one believed him anymore. This is a religious story, isn't it? Dad? No. Understand what he's saying? If you lie all the time, no one's going to believe you. Even if you're telling the truth? That's right. That's exactly what happened here. All your chickens have come home to roost. <laughs> Why are you suddenly obsessed with livestock? <laughs> Bert, what Dick is trying to say is that when you were telling all those lies, they may have seemed harmless. But at a time like this, you see, it's really important that people believe you. All right, just, just give me a second to uh, think about this. 
You're saying the $2,000 I lost is paying for all the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of senseless and stupid lies I've told in the course of my life? I think that's right. It's not fair. <laughs> Who said life was fair? Uh, that, that might have been me. Let me get this straight. You all know the story, right? Yeah. Who told it to you? Our parents. Yeah. Yeah. Can I use your phone, Dick? Sure. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> this is Kirk. Oh, come on, don't don't start crying. <laughs> I know it's been a long time. Since 1978? <laughs> Vermont. Yeah, I own a little cafe. Look, I, I don't have time to chit chat. <laughs> Mom, why didn't you ever tell me the story about the little boy who cried wolf? <laughs> well, they said it was a wolf. <laughs> Of course I love you. Do I have to keep telling you that over and over and over again? Every five years, I love you. 